Greetings students, today I'll be taking you through to materials level 3, civil engineering and CV subject. The module we're going to be looking at today is timber unit 1 part 1. The reference book we're going to be using it's FET College series level 3 published by Pearson. My name is Mr. M. Pindwandwe and I will be taking you through to this lesson. The subject we're going to be looking at today consists of six modules. And these six modules are Timber, Glass, Metals, Corrosion, soldering, brazing, and welding. The last is steel construction. The question is, give examples of where timber is mostly used in construction. I'll give you a typical example where timber is used. One, this is a roof truss. That's where we normally see timber used in the construction industry. It's mostly done by carpenters or carpenter, people who are doing carpentry and roof work. Here's an example of someone doing carpentry, busy constructing a house using a timber. Types of trees. Most of trees used to manufacture uh, timber are exotic trees. The question is, what does the term exotic mean? The term exotic means from another place. That means most of timber that we use is manufactured from exotic trees. Okay, we have two types of exotic trees. We've got hardwood and softwood. Let's start with the hardwood. Hardwood, if you define it, it belongs to the group of trees that are deciduous and bear uh, flowers. And they lose leaves in winter. If you look at this picture, it's clear they lose leaves in winter. They're not always green. Whereas softwood, on the other hand, softwood, they belong to the group of trees that are evergreen and they bear cones. So these trees are evergreen and they bear cones. So the question might be, with true or false, they will say softwood are always soft, hardwood are always hard. And the answer there is false. Why? Softwood are not always soft, hardwood are not always Even though softwood are evergreen, that does not mean they are always soft. Exotic trees growing in South Africa. We have two types of species. We have got pine species and eucalyptus species. Guys, you might be given a question that says, give examples of pine species. Please refer to your handbook published by Pearson. So to get your examples. Okay. In this session, I will give you the examples where we use pine and where we use eucalyptus. The example of pine, where we use pine, where we need, when we're doing flooring. When we do flooring, we use pine. We normally use pine. Furniture. It's done with using a pine. It's manufactured with a pine. Eucalyptus species, boats, and, and poles. Beautiful structure there, made of poles. So, eucalyptus species, as you can see, eucalyptus species is, this species is much stronger than pine species. And another question that we need to look at. How tree grow? 
Guys, the answer here is simple. Each and every year, a growth ring is added, growing towards the outside. If you look and look at this diagram or this picture, you can see it starts as a pith going up to a buck. So which means each and every year a layer is added, meaning you can even count how many layer, how many years this tree has. So another thing that you need to take into consideration when doing this module. Guys, you must be able to understand, you list and discuss all these layers of the tree for you to master uh, uh, the tree. There are some basic terminologies that you need to understand for this topic. First terminology will be failing. It is a process of cutting down trees. Another term is a sawmill. It is the factory where logs are cut, dried, graded, and treated. Guys, let me take you through to, a, to this process from sawmill, from failing to sawmill, up until it reaches the, the user. Okay. And students, if you look at this picture, there is this guy here. Follow the test. This guy is doing the felling, the cutting down of trees. Once the trees are cut, then they will be loaded into a truck, transported to a sawmill. Then in that sawmill, then timber will be sawn or cut into sizes, dried, treated and graded, and be transported to the user. Types of sowing. When timber is sown into the cloth in, in the in the sawmill, then they use three types of sowing. We've got quarter sowing. The quarter sowing is mostly used when we manufacturing the the patterns, or when the thickness is tangential. The grains will be like this. If you look at your picture here, follow my slide. They are, they are your grains, which means when you put your screw or nail, they will be perpendicular to the grains, giving it a high resistance to pull out. We also have live sewing. This is the type of timber we most use in construction because it's the easiest and simple and cost-effective method of sewing. This is the one that is mostly used when cutting timber. Third one, it's almost the same as live sewing. We consider it as a uh, bed sewing, but here it's called plain sewing. If you look at here, it's done the same way as live sewing. Also this side, just that now it's different directions, but they consider that the grains will now be in this direction. Also tangential. Okay, that brings us to the end of our first lesson, which is part one of this unit. The next time when we, we meet, we will discuss the types of distortion in, in sowing timber. Mean, when we saw timber, it doesn't mean our timber will always be straight. It might change in shape. We need to understand the causes of that. What are not eyes? We know that when the tree grow, there are those branches that grew on the tree and you cut them off. Then what are the effects of those branches? We need to discuss the isotropic and anisotropic. We need to discuss the effect of grains. I, I mentioned grains earlier on. We need to discuss the uh, effect of grains on timber. We need to understand the properties of timber. Lastly, the equilibrium co moisture content of timber. 
which means why is it important for timber to have a moisture content in it and student that brings us to the end of our lesson thank you